All right, YouTube, I already explained earlier how the situation in Iraq is intrinsically connected to that in Syria, how Obama probably doesn't really care about the Iraqi situation, as evidenced by the fact that he went golfing while people were being endangered and butchered in the streets of Baghdad and Mosul and Tikrit and everywhere else. Uh, but I wanted to go a step further and call him out for what he really truly is, which is a chicken hawk. Uh, a term given to politicians and other assorted individuals who clamor for war or some violent conflict, but they themselves have not served in the military. They themselves are not currently in the military. They themselves are in basically no danger whatsoever, regardless of who we go to war with, unless we happen to start some sort of nuclear exchange. Uh, Obama fits this description. People used this term to describe Bush, and I think the problem is this. The problem with holding Obama accountable for his admittedly crappy ideas, for his pandering, his scheming, and all of the scandals that revolve around his administration like a miasmatic cloud of poison, the problem with holding him accountable is that Bush was such an unpopular president that it has taken Obama a great deal of effort to lower himself down to the same level and thus begin to be criticized by the same people who called out Bush when he did basically the same thing that Obama is doing. Bush took us in to Iraq and Afghanistan with a big mission accomplished banner saying, oh, now everything's just fine and peachy. We done cleaned up that mess of them Islamists and them terrorist jihadis over there because we've bombed them back to the Stone Age and now we're gonna put a, a free administration in that's uh, accountable to the people. We're gonna have a regular old democracy over there. <laughs> and that's exactly how he talked the entire time. Uh, and people thought it was rather cute until they realized that the death toll was mounting. Um, we use the term chicken hawk to describe Bush. Warmonger, chicken hawk, completely out of touch, scandalous retard, uh, every name in the book that we could throw at Bush. I did too. As early as around 2005 when it was clear that uh, most of his assur uh, assurances towards the American people were completely wrong. Uh, that he had lied the entire way to get us involved in a war which was basically meant to profit the arms industry and the oil companies and to prevent any competition from the Saudis and the Israelis. However, people haven't launched this sort of blitzkrieg verbal attack on Obama largely without being called racists or closeted tea partiers or something along those lines. Now, in the Bush administration, for the first few years, those criticizing the war effort, I can remember this well because I was actually doing this myself, were called unpatriotic loons, hippies, beatniks, ne'er-do-wells, just general unpatriotic individuals. We must all be smoking pot all day and eating our organic granola, living up in the hills in an old beetle van, uh, and that's apparently what these people did all day. Even after half a million people descended on D.C. to protest the war, people still referred to them basically in the same terms that we referred to the anti-war movement in the Vietnam era. Essentially, these people were loons. They didn't support the country. They didn't like the troops. They were anti-troop. They were anti-military. They were anti-America somehow. They were unpatriotic, horrible people. And Obama has taken up the same mantle and his fans, his, his more rabid fan base anyway, that the neoconservatives used in the first years of the wars to protect Bush from all criticism. That is, that anybody that criticizes Obama for being a chicken hawk, which is exactly what he is, and for being a bloodthirsty warmonger, is somehow far right. They're a tea partier. They must be a member of one of these horrible militias, these domestic terrorist groups. They hate the country. They just hate Obama because he happens to have dark skin even though he's half white, and he could easily describe himself as white if he wanted to, and get away with it just as easily. And they say they're just sad that the Democratic Party has the first black man in the White House. And they'll do the same thing wah-wah to Hillary when she inevitably wins, which these people have wet dreams over every single day, even though she's exactly the same as Bush or Obama or any of these other idiots. 
and she's just as butcherous and supported the Iraq War, uh, the same as uh, most of these other people did. And they say, well, if you criticize Obama, there must be something wrong with you. Well, there were people that were alive and well during the Bush administration, myself included, who were anti-war then and who are anti-war now. I don't want to see on the news every fucking day that this young man died in battle in some godforsaken desert out in the Middle East. Well, the death toll mounts as ISIS claims 12 new victims. Al-Qaeda militants threaten to behead five captives. Bombing run gone awry. Friendly fire results in 20 casualties. I don't want to see that on the news anymore. I do not feel threatened by groups of jihadis who are being armed by our own government, the same as we armed Saddam Hussein before throwing him out. Yes, we did. We gave him logistics support. We even allowed him to gas the Iranians when he was at war with them and gave him field support to do so. Before then backing the Iran, well, after backing the Iranians to do the same thing to Saddam. And we keep switching sides and every single time Somehow, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people die or flee from these countries, and then we get a president, and it doesn't matter what party they're in, Democrat, Republican, it really makes no difference ultimately because they have the same ideas. None of these people have actually served in a military capacity. Obama didn't even come as close as Bush did. Here's Bush, who said, well, he has served in the armed forces. Yes, you were in the Air National Guard. That's very nice, Mr. Bush. Uh, he was never in combat, has no experience on that, and yet he's pretending to be some pariah of intelligence when it comes to kicking groups out that he himself had tacitly supported previously. The United States supported Saddam Hussein. We gave him all sorts of logistic aid when we didn't like the Iranians, and we hated them more than we kind of disliked him already at the time, and we said, okay, go gas the Iranians for us. It's okay, here's some uh, satellite pictures, here's where you need to aim. And nobody cared. Nobody said that the United States government or Saddam was monstrous at that time. He had used chemical weapons against his enemies, and we didn't care. Then he made the mistake of attacking Kuwait, and then we cared because we cared about this little tiny country with lots and lots and lots of oil. Uh, when Obama says that he wants to use airstrikes on the uh, ISIS targets in Iraq, what he's essentially saying is he wants to strike these targets and then move foot soldiers in because naturally, ISIS is going to fire back. They've already captured anti-air systems from the Iraqi military, if they didn't already have them anyway, borrowing them from the FSA that we ourselves funded. And they will attack our aircraft, and chances are they'll bring one or two of these aircraft down. When that happens, suddenly, everyone will clamor for war. And Obama is counting on that. He doesn't care about Iraq, by the way. As I said before, he cares about Syria. There is a permeable border between Syria and Iraq. Now there's no border because they already bulldozed a bunch of roads through this eight-foot-tall pile of dirt that they call a border wall. ISIS operates on both sides of this border. If we attack them in Iraq, they're going to go back to Syria, and we will then follow. It's Obama's way of going after Assad after the public shot him down before months ago when he suggested exactly the same thing and had John Kerry sitting there sweating nervously as he testified in front of Congress and said, he's using chemical weapons, he's using sarin, he's using mustard gas, he's using whatever the hell he supposedly used. And then it turned out, according to the UN's own report, the rebels were the ones who had gassed people. And he was using it, and Obama was using it as an excuse to play chicken hawk and go to war with yet another country which we're really not involved in. Syria no longer poses a threat to anybody. The Syrians at this point couldn't invade Macedonia. They simply don't have the support left necessary to do anything. Assad's hanging by a thread. That's why we want to go in there, because we realize he's just going to keep hanging on forever, and slowly these cities will get turned to dust and enveloped by the desert, and soon there will be nobody left in Syria. And it's probably also to help the Israelis, who maintain this land in Golan Heights, that Assad wants back, which is legitimately part of Syria, and Obama just sits there, and he says, well, we'll use airstrikes. Well, we'll fire some missiles. When the hell has that worked? Did that work in Iraq? 
Operation Shock and Awe. Yes, it worked great. It crippled all of these tanks and these uh, airfields were burning and there was oil on fire everywhere and the whole country just imploded in on itself after weeks and weeks of non-stop bombing. And what happened? We occupied the country and at first everything looked peachy because it looked like all forces had dissolved before us like the hand of some confused pagan deity smashing down on a much weaker opponent. But then the jihadists rose up and they started fighting us. Where did they come from? Oh, we couldn't have been arming these groups since the 1980s under fucking Ronald Reagan when we were arming these same groups, which trade arms among themselves freely and with the Saudis, uh, when we armed them to go after the Soviet Union because we didn't want them controlling the minerals and the opium fields in Afghanistan because we wanted them. Because heroin's a lucrative thing. Um, no. The idea that this is going to be a cakewalk, I, I can already see what's going to happen. It's going to be just like Mission of Fucking Accomplished over again. Bush said, oh, well, we've crippled all our enemies. It's going to be smooth sailing now. We'll be out in a few years. Don't worry, America. It won't cost very much. Things will go fine. Uh, everything's just peachy. And it didn't turn out that way. It took us a decade to stabilize the country. We withdraw, and then within six months, suddenly it gets toppled again by ISIS this time. There is no way in hell that limited airstrikes on ISIS targets is somehow magically going to solve the problems that we ourselves created by supporting Bush. I said it then that Bush should be impeached for war crimes. I still maintain that he should have. I believe Obama should be impeached as well. He's done enough damage to this country already, and there are an increasing number of Americans, thankfully, that agree with that sentiment, as evidenced by his poll numbers, which continue a catastrophic fall into oblivion as we speak. He lost another point last night. That's four points since I predicted that he would have a major slide. Looks like somebody was right. I'm predicting that if he uses airstrikes in Iraq, it'll only be used as an excuse to go into Syria and remove Assad. That's exactly the sort of weird thing that we keep doing in the Middle East. And it seems to be some sort of geopolitical game of chess against the Russians and the Chinese and all of these other groups. Well, guess what? I don't care about your chess game. I don't want to see on the news that a bunch of people got plastered all over the desert because somebody fragged them because they were, went crazy, that somebody died in friendly fire when a bomb was mistakenly dropped on the, long, on the wrong location. I don't want to see all that stuff. I already had to suffer through that all through high school and all through my early years of college. It's been nonstop war almost since the time I entered middle school. That was around 9-11. My entire adult life, all I've seen on the news constantly is fighting here and fighting there. And this many thousands of people fled because this many people were killed uh, by a bunch of jihadis or our troops killed this many people today or here's the overall civilian death toll 800,000 people already have died in Iraq as the result of us getting involved in an otherwise secular roughly stable regime we ourselves backed at one point I don't want to hear any of that bullshit anymore I would like the government to focus on trying to grow our own economy trying to create jobs and doing the things that Obama himself promised to do which was to stop all of the foreign meddling, to get us back on track with our allies, and to try to fix the economy. Which, which goal has he accomplished? None! Oh, well, he got us out of Iraq. It's a crowning achievement. Well, bravo, that worked so well. The problem is people in the military told you it wouldn't work, you didn't listen to them, and they turned out to be right, because you have no idea what you're doing. Because Obama is just a coward like Bush. He's no different. People who claim that there's some great divide in the policies of the GOP and the Democratic Party are delusional. The two parties aren't separate at all. They have the exact same ideas over and over and over again. The only thing these people disagree on is which countries they want to attack and which of your civil rights they want to erode. Neither party cares about you at this point. There are a very, very small minority of people in the two parties that have shown any proclivity towards being trustworthy. It's pretty sad when Bernie Sanders and Rand Paul are about the most trustworthy people in Congress right now, because even they're complete morons. 
These are the people that supposedly represent our best interests. Is it in our best interest to go and strike a bunch of goofy jihadists in Iraq, halfway around the world, simply because they got out of hand after we funded them? Does that make sense? Does it make sense? No. And then if that happens, we'll go into Syria. Does it make sense to waste time ousting Assad when it's going to have the same end result as what's happening in Iraq? No. It's just going to destabilize the region further and result in more tens of thousands of bodies mounting up in a pile of gore. But guess what? You don't have to look at that because the media will get muzzled and they won't report those pictures. They'll leak out on some blogs. What's the Iraqi government already done? They've already closed down almost all social media sites. Why do you think they did that? Could it be they don't want you to see piles of festering corpses littering the streets? Yes. It has nothing to do with shutting down ISIS accounts, though, because ISIS is intelligent enough to proxy. I think. And that's exactly what they've been doing. If you go on Twitter right now, you're still going to see all sorts of pro-ISIS posts. What you won't see is regular Iraqi citizens posting pictures of my dead cousin that got shot in the head by a jihadist. My dead sister that got gang-raped, beheaded, and thrown out a window by Iraqi security forces because she happened to, you know, like the jihadists or something. What you won't see is, oh, both my parents are dead. Now I'm an orphan. Hooray, I'm moving to Turkey. You won't see any of that because they don't want you to see that. They don't want you to see the horrors of war. All they want you is to be complicit in the deaths of tens of thousands more innocent civilians along with people that we ourselves are funding. It's a never-ending war scenario because when you're funding both sides, then the armaments industry is happy, the oil industry is happy, the separatists are really happy, everyone else suffers. But those former groups are the ones that pay off our own government to pass laws that aren't in our best interest. That's why we're going to attack Iraq. At least if we don't rise up and tell them no. And all that requires is the same goddamn thing we did when Obama suggested airstrikes in Syria the last time around. All you have to do is make it known you don't like these things. And the government will listen because it's afraid of getting fired. Because once these people are out of a job, the money they get is limited to speaking arrangements if their legacy hasn't been completely tarnished and nobody loves them anymore, like what happened to Bush or Carter, and which should happen to Obama and Hillary. I don't want to see them make a penny off speeches after they leave office. People should be t uh, totally angry at these people, and yet there are still people in this country who give them support. I, I don't understand it. Their policies haven't worked. They haven't achieved any of the goals that they set for themselves. All they've done is lie the entire time they've been in office. Why would anyone support them? You think a D or an R after the name makes a difference? You're retarded. There's no other way to put it. You're, you're completely dumb. Uh, there's no other way to put it.